So if you take a compass like this, it's essentially designed for a level navigation. What if you do like this? What if you put it uh, uh, sideways? Where is the north? Where is the south? Does this uh, reading make any sense at all? It looks like the compass stopped working altogether. So uh, that can happen if you do a sudden change of perspective and uh, turn things upside down. But uh, let's turn the compass back into action, shall we? What kind of a compass do you think you might be having over there as an uh, inbuilt system? So you don't have to depend on a uh, cheap uh, piece of hardware from a Nepali trekking store. Uh, it's been serving me well, but it's not uh, that reliable at the end of the day when the magnetic currents shift and so on. So anyway, your own internal human compass, the cognitive compass, how's that work? Which way do you orient? Do you orient at all? Do you just orient by your left and your right side by, a, by an entirely subjective compass? Or do you have a natural compass of four directions and uh, four seasons? Or again, do you have an obsessive compass of ordinary and cardinal directions that you want to pursue independent of each other? Those are the kinds of uh, uh, jumpy and buggy compasses that people use. The natural compass in the medium is quite good, uh, but the best compass of all is the kind of compass that integrates the human being seamlessly with the nature that integrates natural awareness and uh, human awareness that integrates sentience and apparent insentience into a single compass of uh, generalized and uh, all-purpose versatile awareness. Anyways, the old world is full of examples like that. In fairy tales, in stories of great adventures, Sinbad and the Seven Seas, Captain Jack Sparrow, uh, the great fairy tales of the Green Brothers, the Puranas, Indic mythologies, all the old pagan myths, they're all full, chock full of the same stories of the natural compass of life. So what is that natural compass? Let's go south. South is that way. Let's go south. South or down is when you go into the embryo of introspection in the color of red in the midwinter in the midnight in new moon if you follow the angels you are with Uriel in the dark of the devastating night if you are a Buddhist you go for Upeksha or absolute equanimity that's the south alright what happens when you rise from the south, from the winter, you go into the spring, eastward. If you follow the angels, you follow the green nature's Raphael with the healing streams. If you are a Buddhist, uh, you experience waves of mudita or sympathetic delight upon seeing how all beings come into bloom again uh, in the spring of their uh, self-born life cycle. Again, if you are in the middle of a conflicted world, you need to take a sword like Mikhail. You need to take a sword of knowledge and terminate the old, let the leaves fall, like now is the season of the fall, uh, the autumn time. The essence of life that culminated in the summer is rising again, reaching for the winter, returning to the heaven from the earthly domain. And similarly, if you are a Buddhist, you experience uh, compassion when you see Mikhail cutting with the sword of autumnal termination, challenging, defying the old ways of life, showing that there is always an end to the old order, a period of darkness, and again, a period of new coming light at the end of it all.
that's one direction of the compass we're walking westward right now with the beautiful windmills and the dog racing on the background so now we're going northward who is up north if north is up if south is down if north is up Mikhail is there Raphael is there Uriel is there so Gabriel is over here in the sky the angel of revelation the summertime the midsummer the higher cognitive uh, meta stream that rejuvenates and reestablishes the universe and the nature in the template of the human psychophysical whole that's a good thing to contemplate and sometime follow the wings of the angels follow the clouds and the stars and the sky search for the primal nature search for the primal essences of being inside the human self search for the same thing in the human society and search for it in the universe for basis self nature society universe and then you have the axis of the fifth that keeps all things in balance in their center at the heart of the compass you remember the compass over here is entirely worthless if it doesn't have a center it's been a and a human being if you don't have a center to spin around that follows from the center that spins above and that spins below then I'm afraid you're awfully lost in this big bad world so why not find a compass like Jack Sparrow did on all those awesome movies and uh, why don't you go and read some old fairy tales and try to self-absorb the essence that is universal in all of them however it sounds like there's nothing to believe there is only thing is to experience directly the principles that are alive in all these countless narratives of natural and integrated existence so that's a fair load ship full of fairy tale over there uh, contemplate on that please and uh, let me know how your compass looks like there are lots of examples online these days just google it up and wisdom matrix thank you peace out compass in concluded there thank you